Let's take this opportunity to talk about how to make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. And this is very important because many times some people come to the clinic and their question is, but doctor, how do you know? How do you arrive to this, di to this diagnosis? So let me tell you how this happens. So in first place, the one thing that I need people to understand is that diagnosis is, uh, the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is a clinical diagnosis. What that means is that we will be using the elements of the history and the findings in the physical examination in order to arrive to the diagnosis. As of today, there is no uh, laboratory test, there is no MRI, and there is no imaging study that will allow us to make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease with 100% certainty. Now, how do we have arrived to the diagnosis of Parkinson? So to begin, let's talk about what are those basic symptoms that present in people with Parkinson's disease. So there are four cardinal symptoms that I summarize with a mnemonic of TRAP. T for tremors, R for rigidity, and rigidity is stiffness. A stands for akinesia or bradykinesia, which really means slowness. And then P that stands for postural instability, which really means balance problems. So a person with Parkinson's disease typically presents with a combination of these symptoms and depending on the time that they're coming to the clinic, they might be showing one symptom more so than the other. Now, to be able to make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, typically people will need to show symptoms of slowness. So everybody with Parkinson's disease, in my impression, will show some slowness. And then they need to have one of the following symptoms. So they need to have the tremors, they need to be rigid, or they need to have balance problems. So they do not need to have all of them. They need to be slow in at least one of the other symptoms. So this presents uh, a very in, interesting uh, complexity because not everybody with Parkinson's disease will actually have the shaking. So we always think about Parkinson's disease and the fact that the person has to be showing some tremors in their hand. But you know what? That is not true for everybody. In my personal uh, experience, between 70 to 75% of people with Parkinson's will come with the typical tremors that we see in the hands or the legs. However, the rest of the people might not be showing similar symptoms. The second type of Parkinson's disease that we see that does not typically shake is what we call the slow and stiff type of Parkinson's. And then there is a smaller group of people that will have issues with gait and balance right from the beginning. So as you can see, not everybody with Parkinson's disease will be presenting the same way. And everybody will have a progression that is a little bit different. However, the other feature of Parkinson's disease is that when they take levodopa or dopaminergic medicines, the symptoms typically improve. If your doctor thinks that you have Parkinson's and you take the medicines for Parkinson's, but you do not see any benefit, then your doctor might say, you know what? It might be possible that you have an atypical Parkinson's or secondary Parkinson, which is something that I'm going to discuss in the next video. So now you begin to understand that this might be a little bit more complex than what we believe. Typically, as doctors, we want to see a picture of the brain, so either a CT scan or an MRI. And depending on the particular situation, we might request a test called a DAT scan, and we also might request some other testing that will help us fine tune and arrive to the diagnosis that we're looking. I really hope that you find this information to be useful because there are many, many questions about how is it that we finally make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. In future videos, I will be talking about the secondary Parkinsonism, the typical Parkinson, and I will be discussing as well what are the other diagnostic tests that we use to make a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. I hope you find this to be useful and make sure that you connect via email uh, in first place so you can submit your own questions and in second place for you to uh, learn when is it that we have new educational videos in the website. Thank you.